Because again, you have many, many choices open to you when you solve the problem. But that's just a, that, that amount of freedom turns out to be difficult for some people that they say, just teach me how to do it one way. Don't teach me 30 different ways how to do it. But unfortunately, I'm going to teach you 30 different ways. OK. Um, so how do you solve this? But what do you think this? What do you think the answer is going to be in this particular case? Does somebody's sex, if you know somebody's a male or a female, can that help you predict if they're going to be a finance major with a higher degree of accuracy as if you didn't know about that? Yes? It's independent. Independent. OK. Now, I think, I think you're going to turn out to be wrong. But again, it's hard to say right or wrong, because in real life, it's really something in the middle. But it's clearly not. I think I'm disagreeing with you. It's not going to be t totally independent. But maybe to make it clearer, let's pick an example where they are independent. Let me say, let's say, for example, I picked Um, let's say I picked 25, 25, 25, 25. Male, female, finance major, not finance major. I'll oh, put this down. I'll spell sex. Finance major. 50, 50, 100, 50, 50. In this case, Dina, I would agree with you because here, this, this number is the, 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 if I would ask you the question, what, what, what does this data present? Does, does sex help you predict somebody's a finance major? The answer would be no because how many people choose to be finance majors? Well, the male is about 25 out of 50, which is 50% of the time. Among the females, it's 25 out of 50. So both are exa acting exactly the same. And therefore, if you knew somebody's a male, you can't say, oh, I have a better prediction if they're a finance major. The answer would still be 50-50. All right, so in this case, the answer would be they're, they're totally independent. But our example, the males choose to be finance majors 48 out of 60, but the, the females is 25 out of 40, which is not exactly the same fraction. So it's really what's really relevant here are the ratios or the fractions. So if you wanted to solve the problem by, again, I told you there'd be three methods. One is common sense, the other is by one formula, and the third way by a third, third formula. And each one of those methods have eight possibilities because you can choose this row and this column, and this column and this row. But if you want to do it by the common sense method, you would ask yourself, does this fraction, 48 divided by 60, the same as 25 divided by 40, that's the key, do you understand that? That's the key calculation here. In this case, the, the answer would be yes. So even let's find about this one. Let's take the example where you have 10 males, I'm sorry, 10 males who are finance majors and 30 who are not, and females, this is a yes. Uh, let's say it was 5 and 15. Half of, so this is 20 people here, 40 people here, 60 people here, 45 here, 15 here. So 10 out of 40, or 25% of the males want to be finance majors. 5 out of 20, which is also 25%, it's also a quarter. So in this case, again, this, the sex variable and the finance major variable are going to be uh, totally independent. The right answer would be totally independent, which is different than the original data. So the question, once you understand intuitively how it works, to develop a formula that will give you the answer without having to think too much. I mean, like, the, the advantage of formulas is that you don't literally say, I mean, I'm trying to teach the class how to think about these things, but it's like teaching 101 is 2. I mean, there's a whole theory behind it. Every time you have to solve 101 is 2, you have to go back to the theory. You can't make too much progress. So after you understand the concept, then it becomes a formula, and you do it automatically without thinking about it. So there is a formula, and the formula is based on the conditional probability. And it's going to be based on uh, I'm happy to need everything on the board here. Everything is, I guess I'll have to use it over here. Okay, if I could calculate the chance that somebody's a male <coughs> given their finance major, which we know how to do, that's with formula over here, 48 divided by, you know, you break it up into two pieces, and one piece, you divide it. And I told you that's equal to, and I'll put a question mark, P of something, and I'll get another question mark. I'm going to claim the following. When this calculation exactly equals that calculation, that proves the two sets of variables are independent. What letter makes the most sense over here? That's, that's the question, which may or may be not that clear, and I'm listening to myself talk. If I, the formula that's going to prove that two variables are independent, namely this one and that one are independent, is going to be you calculate a conditional probability, you calculate something else, and if the two of them turn out to be exactly equal, if, if this equals that, that implies independence. My question to the class is, what, what do I substitute? What letter or letters go over there that's going to make this a true statement? That makes sense that this should be relevant for the decision of the independence and dependent. Again, I promise you, when you hear the answer, you say it makes perfect common sense. But a lot of students 
don't seem to get it at first. I'm going to say yes. Um, would it be M? M is a Mary? Yeah. And you'd be right. Good. Saved me a lot of time. Got it right right away. Okay. Now, it would be nice if you tell me why you came up with that letter. Okay. okay so well, right here's my reasoning. Okay, so mm -hmm. let's, 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 let's write it down. Make sure we're talking about the same thing. So, Adiza says that if the if you can prove the M given the F is the same as the M, that proves the columns and the rows are independent. Now we're going to be using these numbers here to do our calculations. Okay, so why is that, why is that make sense? My reasoning was just because F is the given property and M is the question. So if you can prove that the M Okay, I, I, okay let, me, let me rephrase. You, I think you're right, and from my mind, but let me rephrase it. I'll tell you what I'm thinking, and you tell me if we're thinking the same thing, and, and we'll see if we're on the same track. Okay, this is, this is saying M given further information about the other variable. And this is the same M, but they're not given the same information, that, that, that information. If, it's, if two of them turn out to be the same, what does that prove? Was this information relevant? Doesn't change the answer. The answer's the same, whether you're looking at Given the F, not given the F, you get the exact same answer. So what does that prove about the F? The F is totally irrelevant. If the F is irrelevant, it means the two variables aren't related to each other. Does that make sense? Yes, no? Yeah. Make sense to you? Yeah. Anybody not sure? So, so therefore, the formula says, try, you pick, now why, why did I pick the M and the F? Yeah. Male and, I'm sorry, F is a very, my, my apology, my apology. Big mistake. Can I read me after race? Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. It's not M and I meant I meant the Y. Finance may just pick a bad symbol there. It meant M and Y. I'm going to try it again because I may have confused you. Because M and F, what's the chance of M given F? Zero. You can't, it can't be a male if you're giving you a female. The two of them are mutually exclusive. Okay. M, what's the chance somebody's a male given they're a finance major, which is the example I kept pointing to. So the answer is, well, what about if you're a male without being told you're a finance major? The same exact thing, let's say, it turns out to be the case. That proves the Y was totally irrelevant, in which case, that means the two variables are unrelated. Now, why did they pick, why didn't they pick the Y and the M? Why did they pick the M and the Y? I could have done that. Why did they, I could have picked the, the F and the N, or I could have picked the F and the Y. I could have picked the, the M and the N. I mean, I could have picked any pair of numbers, and I could have picked them in any order. So how many, how many possibilities are there? Four or eight or sixteen, who knows what. So, so the point is, you might as well pick the first row and the first column. Why make your life more complicated? But you really have a choice to which one you want to do. So let's do the calculation. What is m given y? Well, we know the answer is already 48 divided by 73. How do we know that? Well, we do m n y divided by y. It comes out to that. So this is 48 divided by 73. What about the m by itself? Well, the m, that's easy. That's going to be, where are we? 60 out of 100. So that's 60 out of 100 which is 0.60. So this one we know is 0.60, but how, about, how, much, how much is obviously very advantageous to change this into a two decimal place of a calculation. What is 48 divided by 73? You're not gonna make me take out a calculator, are you? Somebody should do that, please. 48 divided by 73 is? Say again? 0.65 So it's still 0.66? 0.66 when you round it to two places. And is 66 the same as 60? It's close, which means in stat two they may be considered independent, but in this stat one, they're not the same, so therefore they're not equal. Therefore, the answer is in the, uh, independent or dependent. Remember, if they're equal, that proves they're totally unrelated, they're totally separate. But if there was a the lack of equality, what does that prove? That one number affects the other number. So therefore, the answer is dependent. Dependent. Okay. Now, at the risk of, I mean, I've, if we, um, okay. So now that, that, and then you're going to practice this. You know, again, you can. I think you can practice this, and this tape will be available to look at if you want to see this again, eventually. Um, but I want to show you now another way of solving the problem, which is slightly easier. But you don't need it because you can always solve it this way. Okay, this is pretty easy by itself. But the, next, the reason why I'm teaching you the next and last formula of the chapter before the test is that you don't need it so much for this test because this formula works fine for this test. You're going to need this formula for the beginning of chapter five. So let's, let's, let's learn another way of solving the problem. And I'll solve the problem by running out of space. And you also need this to solve some of the 
other questions.